They get food poisoning, break bones, etc. Best answer. Your premise is wrong. Humans can survive in the wild. There are many cultures that do so to this day. We survive by building shelters and making clothes to shelter ourselves from the elements and building tools and weapons to hunt. People can eat raw meat just fine, especially if they grow up doing so. Much of our fragility is due to the fact that we grow up sheltered. Living out in the wild, we would toughen up, learn to deal with pain and discomfort, build up a stronger immune system, which is obviously what I want to do. Even so, it wouldn't be an easy life. There's a reason that in ancient times, a person who lived to 30 was considered old. Living to 30 is enough time to have children and raise them to the point where they could take care of themselves, which is all that evolution really cares about. So basically, what it's saying in that first paragraph is that people just live long enough to reproduce, just like animals. You know, it doesn't matter what happens to an animal once they, you know, once they get to a certain age, because it's all just survival. You know, things die. You know, you know, you, you know, so they don't survive as long. It, do, it doesn't really matter because as long as you fulfill the purpose of reproducing, then you fulfilled the purpose of your true life. So you also need to understand that evolution is all about trade-offs. We have large brains, which are obviously very useful. The problem is that they take a huge amount of energy, up to 20% of our body's combined energy. They require a constant supply of oxygen. Other tissues can survive for short periods without oxygen, but not neurons. They're vulnerable to damage. They take up space while we're developing in the uterus. When we grow up, they hog resources which could otherwise go to our bodies and allow us to grow faster. Also, problem is that our immune system is, even though it's immune, you know, it, but there's lots of bacteria that always collect in there every day. The, the body is so fragile because the, the mind is the most powerful thing in our body. I saw another article that said that instead of having a powerful immune system and a smaller brain, they decided, well, you know, have a, small, a large brain, but a bigger brain means we're more intelligent, which means we're more intelligent to make more conscious decisions for ourselves. It takes a long time to eat raw meat, like a long time. I mean, you could spend hours doing it, but cooked meat is a lot softer to eat, and it makes things easier in our lives because we don't spend as much time eating compared to other animals. I mean, all other animals ever do is eat and sleep pretty much and protect their territory. Whereas we spend more time doing things, becoming involved in everything we're doing. We have jobs, you know, we, you know, we take breaks sometimes, we, we, we fly every once in a while, but Animals don't have that sort of that sort of thing in their brain. They they just think about surviving. That's it. All right. So the thing is, the benefits for humans in our current situation outweigh the downsides. Our ancestors appeared to be in the right place, at the right time to set us down a path of increasing specialization and intelligence, which may be one of the reasons why. High intelligence is so rare in our animal kingdom. It's a survival strategy. It's not perfect, but it works, which is really what matters with respect to evolution. Okay, and it does say here that adaptation is about efficiency and that some animals do get food poisoning and break bones as well. We aren't the only ones. They just don't show it because, especially birds, because birds do a very, very good job at hiding their pain. They want to hide their pain so that they don't get attacked by other predators. I'm pretty sure of it that a hawk has gotten food poisoning before. Although I know that's extremely controversial to say. But, I mean, if they're really good at eating all meat, I don't see why they would get food poisoning if they've done it for so many years. Whereas, We've only done it like maybe like a couple hundred years ago. Maybe. I mean, that was maybe the last time we've actually eaten raw meat or 
it, well, it was more widespread, rather, more widespread and common. But especially people that live up north, people that live in the Arctic, you know, they, they still do it. They still eat raw meat. And so do some people from third world, third world countries. They also learn to survive in the wild, just like hawks do, you know. And then, of course, you got, you know, the temperature, survival of the fittest. We build shelters. Yeah, this, that's just really interesting. And then it says, okay, there's another forum post here. Did prehistoric man eat raw meat? If he did, then did he get sick? If he did, then shouldn't we be eating it too? Our earliest ancestors did. Oh crap, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta stop this.